Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, Marcio here. In this video, we are going to have a nice chat about one of my favorite topics, which are AWS Lambda functions. Lambda functions, they allow us to write code without having to think about servers. If you guys may remember, the most traditional way of deploying code or deploying an application is to simply go write your code, then you test, then you package your code, then you upload somewhere, and then you lastly deploy into a server. What if somebody gave us the ability to simply write a code, a simple code, and simply push that code to somewhere and that code would be running automatically? You have to look no further because we have the solution. That is what AWS functions do. And they do pretty well. We're gonna also go through a quick demo in the end, so I'm gonna show you guys how it works. But let's take a look at the AWS page. As you guys can see here, so this is the AWS Lambda Functions page, and their motto is run code without thinking about servers or clusters. Run code without provision and managing infrastructure. Simply write a code and we can upload. The upload process can be done via code itself, via zip file, or even in a Docker container, which is pretty handy. And the code will automatically respond to code execution requests at any scale, which means no matter how many requests the application on that code will have, AWS will handle that load for us. So we don't have to worry about that. They even say that can be from a dozen events per day to hundreds of thousands per second. So that's amazing. Another good thing is the cost. So we can also save costs by paying only for the computing time we use to run our functions and we don't have to pay for everything just like we would pay if we had one server running 24 by 7. And the server may be even idle and we don't know but we are still paying for that. That doesn't happen with Lambda functions because we only pay for the time that the function has been executing. Another great thing here is to optimize the code execution time and performance. We can also tweak the function, runtime and memory, and concurrency as well. There are lots of things that we can do to make our code more um, optimal. And a more formal definition here is that how the Lambda function works. So basically, the Lambda is a serverless event-driven computing service that lets you run code for virtually any type of application or backend service without provisioning or managing servers. And you can trigger Lambda from over 200 AWS services and software as services, size applications, and only pay for what we use, which is amazing. They have here uh, some examples. The first one here is the file processing. We have a, for example, a photograph or a video file is, is taken or is recorded then someone just pushes that file to a bucket. It can be via file upload on the application or doesn't really matter. Once that file hits the bucket, the Lambda is triggered. The Lambda then will execute the code. In this case, the Lambda will resize or crop the image. And then that Lambda can also push that cropped image to another bucket or to somewhere else where the application will also read the image. There is also a stream processing. So if you have a stream of data, there is also the possibility to hook up these things, such as um, Kinesis. Then once the event gets to Kinesis, it also triggers the Lambda function. Then the Lambda function will do something with that data and save it to DynamoDB. And then someone else can just grab that data and do analytics or anything else they want. Another very interesting point here is for web applications. Remember the web application, the, uh, it is usually a service or a web service that is running, that serves HTML pages or can be a Node.js serving React.js applications. And once somebody clicks on a button or fill in a form, we need to push that information somewhere else so that data could be saved or some processing can happen in the background and so on and so forth. So Lambdas, they are also amazing for the web application use case. And the example here is the web application can be hosted in an S3 bucket. So you don't even have to create a server or provision that server for that web application. Just deploy into a bucket and then that bucket will become a web server. Then we can also hook up an API gateway to shield 
the AWS Lambda or to, to handle all the HTTP stuff that we need. And then once that API Gateway gets hit, it will then forward the request to the Lambda, then we will process the whatever that information and then save to DynamoDB. There is also the IoT backends, so we can have data from sensors or well, any kind of device that we want to together, and then we can simply trigger a Lambda for handling that data and saving somewhere else. Likewise, for a mobile backend, this scenario is pretty much the same as for a web application. If we have a mobile application, we definitely need to have a backend running somewhere else. And here, this backend is, is, uh, is gonna be a set of Lambda functions that will respond to any actions that the user will type on their phone. And we can also have an API gateway to give us lots of facilities on request throttling, routing, and many other things that we need, cores. And then it's gonna trigger the Lambda function that will do something else, and then that data is gonna be saved. Now it's time for our demo here. Uh, the demo is gonna be pretty simple. As you guys can see here, I'm back to the console here for AWS. And as you guys can see here, so there is the Lambda function here um, option. And I can simply cl click on that option. That will be this screen here where I can simply create a new function. There are a few options here. We can either create a function from scratch, use a blueprint, or we can also create that function via a container image. So we can also give the function name. So that's gonna be my first function. And we can then choose the runtime. So um, they have support for pretty much every single runtime that we can think about. So that's .NET, Golang, Java, Node.js, Python, Ruby. Let's say we choose Python. We can also the, uh, change the default the execution role because AWS needs a role to run that Lambda function. Um, we have a few options here, but I'll just create a new role based on basically for the Lambda permissions. So AWS will automatically create a new role to run that Lambda. Advanced settings, we can have also other configuration here. I can, and I'm going to click on the enable function URL. So because I need to access, or I want to access this function via HTTP. So there's gonna be an HTTP wrapper for this function. And I'm just gonna leave the default as the AWS IAM. And I'm also gonna configure cores because I may have a web client that wants to use that function as well. So I, I want to cover that. And we are pretty much good to go here. Uh, I'm just gonna use these default parameters here. And once I say create function, the console uh, is gonna take all of this information, uh, try to process it, and then push me to the function editor. This is the function console itself. And we can just write our code here. So there is a piece of code here already written for us. And it simply returns a 200 and saying a JSON file saying hello from Lambda. I believe we're pretty good to go. We can simply click on test and we can even pass a new event here. In this case, we'll be testing it straight from the Lambda perspective. And once we save, let me give it a name and let me save. And if I run again, then I'll get the result. So I just gave that input, the Lambda got triggered and then the response is here. The response is here, which is status code 200 and the body was simply a string saying hello from Lambda. And that's it for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Do not forget to like, subscribe and also click on the notification bell so you guys won't miss any of my videos and I'll see you guys next time.